he gave Kirk. And while uh, nobody can replace that performance, the characters are so vital and the chemistry between them is so important and relevant that that's what makes Star Trek what it is. It was the groundwork that we laid that was able to change people's minds that these can be iconic characters played by other actors. Mr. Chekhov, lower the force field, please. I said I think that this series proved to Paramount executives that having other actors play the roles was viable, was commercially viable. Because uh, when James made Come What May, although there were people complaining about you know, various actors in the, the script, people accepted it and it was heavily downloaded and, and it was talked about, the chatter was just amazing. Those images that were shown to us earlier, were they the future? The characters are iconic. In fact, I think the entire idea is iconic. This idea of um, people from all different backgrounds and all different races and different cultures coming together and um, being a force for good is, I think that's a very iconic thing. Lieutenant Uhura, you will assume command and place Mr. Scott under arrest. No, sir. I will not assume command of this ship. The people here are some of the most fantastic people I have ever met. It's, it, it is really fun. It's like, um, it's like Star Trek camp, in a way, for me. Um, it's like a family reunion at the same time as boot camp a little bit. Gang, if you're not working and you're getting makeup, I want you to stay here. The schedule's very demanding, but it, we have a lot of fun and we get a lot done. It's amazing how much we get done. And I look forward to it every year. We'll dolly back and we'll take that same shot where she takes a couple of steps toward Mount Thun. Huh? My challenge for myself was to make this look as much like the original series as possible. In the shots and in the, in the movement and the blocking and the lighting, as much as possible. And it was a daunting task because of, like I said, the, the locations. There are all these scenes. Malk Thon's control room, the Katumba's sitting room, Callie's headquarters. So I had in my mind what I, what I thought we might do, but then you get here on set and there isn't even anything built yet. And literally, talk about flying by the seat of your pants to get something done. They're building the set, you're having makeup put on because it takes two hours to put your makeup on. And then you step out and you look at the setting, you go, okay, how do we play this scene in this, in this space? It's a view screen shot. Malkthon says, again, warriors, he's sending out a message. And you gotta come up with something. And any preparation you did before, you throw that out the window. Because you gotta come up with something in this space. Uh, it was a challenge. Spot goes to science. I worked on uh, Star Trek Phase Two, the original version, and I worked on uh, Star Trek The Motion Picture. Directing is way more fun than writing. This is hard work too, for sure, but you get to do it with a lot of other people, and you get to interact, and you really, you know, it's much more playful than writing ever is. What? I don't, uh, it's not so much the line itself, I'm just looking for some kind of consistency. I have to ensure that things stay consistent between shot to shot, that people are at stations when they need to be. You know, if, if we're cutting between uh, like a crossed arm pose and, and this sort of pose, you know, it's not awkward looking. You know, that they, they use the same color hypo sprays and all that sort of stuff. Davey, how are we splitting up this master? How far are we, what's the out point? I think Star Trek is in great hands here. Um, I have a lot of fun doing this. There's two things. I enjoy the creative aspect of it, being able to see, wow, that's my work. And I've inherited a, a phenomenal second family, so it, it's, it's really great. <laughs> We've been turning left for five the last ten. five light years, Captain. <laughs> but it Zulu. won't turn off. I'll call AAA. <laughs> I never dreamed that it would be as big as it is and that as many people would come from as many different points as they do. That's my first time working in Star Trek. I came from uh, London. I live in Barcelona as well. So I'm thinking to move out to Barcelona now. But uh, yeah, coming here for two weeks to work in the child, have a really nice experience, meet the really nice people. The biggest reason I come up here are the people. I work with amazingly wonderful people. Not, I mean, they're they're extremely talented, and they're just 
lovely, wonderful human beings. Action! Doors! I think what we're doing is very important uh, because we've taken Star Trek into our own hands and created something that is what we really feel that Star Trek is all about. Audio. Hold on. Quiet on set. You know, whether there's new people or old people coming in, nobody gives up. You know, they, they just want it to be the best it can be, and I think it all fell into place for the child. I think it was just a fun, a fun experience. Cut. Sound is happy with that. Sound is happy with that. Nice level to you guys. James is very, very passionate about the authenticity of this bridge. This is his, this is like museum quality, this bridge. He takes great pains to make sure that it is. Makeup for this shoot involves a lot of character, just like your standard character makeup, base and stuff like that. But then also you got Spock and you've got some of the diseases and stuff like that. And, and that's what we have to take care of here, putting Spock's ears on and making him look like, um, we're not even trying to make him look like Leonard Nimoy, but Brandon looks like Leonard or, or Zach Kinto. It takes about an hour, hour and a half to put on the ears and the makeup and the blending and put it all together. I try not to push that button because it kind of gives me a little tickle on the bum. I wait until people walk away. And this button here, if I push that button, it's a little love message to Ahura. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful to be in Spock ears. Because then I'm kind of elfish when I don't have my wig on. That green blood of yours proved to be a particular pain in my posterior. It's really great walking around and everybody just like staring at you, be like, "Oh my God, you're so, you're, you're Spock. You really are Spock." Lieutenant Chekhov contained it as quickly as possible. Certainly, as this thing has grown, um, my family has grown. To have this extended family um, has been a blessing and to watch it grow and to see the see the reaction of people when they come for the first time and it's just been this amazing I think that's probably the best part of all this thing is the friendships that you make and and who the people are where they come from <laughs> I think anybody who's really into Star Trek the original series loves that set loves that that bridge you know there's so many magic moments that's place on it targeting phasers hold your fire Mr. Cotton ship to ship Alien frequencies open sir Bring on vessel. This is Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. James took me to the turbo lift and the doors were closed. And he opened the doors and I stepped out onto the bridge. And I got that first look as you're stepping off of the turbo lift. And I literally had a tear coming down my face because it was just exactly as I had imagined it. And the the raw emotion still hits me because it's so much, so much home. It's the place where the magic happens. Went out of the turbo lift there and stopped and thought, wow, I'm here. And so I feel like I'm at home. And that's the feeling about the bridge. It feels like another home. And with all the friendships that I've forged, that's where I see them all on that bridge. The ability for a fan to be able to make their own project and not have to wait for Hollywood to bring something out. Uh, a lot of people dream of going to Hollywood and making movies. Well, now you can do it in your backyard. And you can do it with the quality and the professionalism of virtually anything that's released in the theaters. And the people with the true talent get to shine at that point. A lot of people that would have been, say, working at 7-Eleven for the rest of their life, but always had that dream in the back of their head, but didn't have the ability to step forward and go to California to do something like that, can now go ahead and do their project. And if it's successfully received and they're happy with the quality, maybe that'll be that extra push to get them to go ahead and do and live out their dream. Action. My experience here at Star Trek Phase 2 has opened up possibilities in my mind. This has brought my imagination to life. And for the longest time, my imagination was shut away. I wish this could have been around in 1969. <laughs> 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 I'm
Cut! <laughs> 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 <laughs>